Welcome everybody. We have till now completed each and every strategy which is required to deal with the non-standard trigonometric equations in order to get their solution sets. That's what we have done and completed till now. Today what I have for you is some key points, very very important things to keep in mind while dealing with trigonometric equations. And so the topic says, Important points to be remembered while solving trigonometric equations. That is what we will be discussing in today's lecture, some very very important key points which you have to actually keep in mind, you have to remember them while you are solving your trigonometric equations. The very first point deals with something known as extraneous roots. What do I mean by these extraneous roots? What is this? For this, something which this name already suggests is extra and roots. So extraneous roots already have the terminology of extra in it. Extra means more. Extra means something that we do not require but it is there. That means the entire word extraneous roots obviously can be understood as extra roots, more roots. That means the number of roots which we should have something more than that is what is extraneous roots. Let me write an example and let us deal with a certain trigonometric equation to understand the meaning of these more or extraneous roots. Suppose I say solve the trigonometric equation tan theta equals 1. Suppose this is what I say. How will you be able to solve this? Well, there are many methods to do it. Obviously, it's something very, very easy, very basic standard trigonometric equation whose direct solution also we know. But let me uh, adopt a certain strategy in order to solve this. I say we have tan theta equals 1. When I am saying solve this trigonometric equation means I am asking you to give me the set of all the values of this unknown angle theta which if I plug in in this trigonometric equation I get the right hand side as 1. That's what I am asking. Because those thetas will be the solution for this trigonometric equation. And that is what we need to find. Just suppose after this step, I write squaring both sides. Suppose this is what I get. If I adopt the strategy of squaring both sides, what is it that I'll get? Well, this is going to imply square tan theta, you're going to get tan square theta equals 1 square, that is 1. Now, you know 1 can be written as tan of pi by 4. And I can write this as tan of pi by 4 whole square because tan of pi by 4 is 1 and 1 square is same as tan of pi by 4 whole square, which is nothing but tan square pi by 4, right? That is what is going to happen over here. And now, if you remember another type of standard trigonometric equation which we dealt with involving the squared trigonometric functions, that is going to come into play over here. How you have tan square of an unknown angle equals to tan square of this known angle. Remember what we dealt with, which was 
tan square theta equals tan square alpha if and only if theta equals n pi plus minus alpha for every integer n. And that is what is the scenario which is lying over here. I have tan square theta equals tan square pi by 4 where this pi by 4 is lying in the principal domain of the tangent function which is minus pi by 2 pi by 2 open interval. And just like the rule says, the unknown angle for which tan square theta equals tan square pi by 4 in this way is going to come out to be what? n pi plus minus pi by 4 for every integer n. That's what is going to come out. Just keep a hold at it. Hold this very solution that you have obtained by this strategy of first squaring and then using the very general solution of the standard trigonometric equation involving squared term which was this. Once you have done that, kept this solution at hold, let us now adopt another general natural strategy to solve this very equation tan theta equals 1. So suppose I say we have tan theta equals 1. Again, because this 1 belongs to the range of tan and I know the angle inside the principal domain of tan at which the tangent ratio is 1, that is pi by 4, I can write 1 as tan pi by 4. And tan of an unknown angle is equal to tan of a known angle means theta is equal to n pi plus pi by 4 for every integer n. By this strategy wherein I have not squared first the equations both sides, I am getting this theta. Compare it with this particular theta. After squaring, I was getting definitely solution set same as this but partially. I was getting n pi plus pi by 4 for every integer which is actually the solution here as well. But apart from it, I was also getting n pi minus pi by 4 for every integer z. But n pi minus pi by 4, if you plug in over here in place of theta, on the right hand side, you don't get 1. That means only and only n pi plus pi by 4 are your actual solutions. n pi minus pi by 4, you are obtaining as solutions but they actually are not the solutions. Those values of the unknown angle theta which are present in the solution set but do not satisfy the very trigonometric equation are what are known as extraneous roots. They are extra roots which are obtained in the solution set but they are actually not the solutions. No, we don't need that. And why was this happening? Why when I adopted the very general strategy, natural strategy, I came up with the exact correct set of solutions. But when I adopted the strategy of squaring, somehow the number of answers increased. Increased so much that so many extra roots I got in the solution set. Of course, I got the actual solutions, but I also got so many values of the unknown angle theta, which are not the solutions, but they are present in the solution set. n pi minus pi by 4 for every integer n, they are infinitely many roots which are present in the solution set, but they are not actually the solutions. So many extraneous roots can be created if you square both sides of the trigonometric equation, yes. Squaring both sides brings into picture extra unrequired roots. That is why we need to avoid squaring both sides of the equation or we need to avoid raising to higher powers 
both sides of the equation in order to avoid the presence of extraneous roots. Yes, the moment you square both sides, cube both, both sides or take to the power 4 both sides anything. When you raise both sides of the equation to higher powers, you invite extraneous roots. You invite such values of the unknown angle theta which sit inside the solution set but are not actually the solutions. And that is why, that is the very first point which you should keep in mind. You have to remember to avoid squaring or raising to higher powers both sides of the equation to avoid extra roots known as extraneous roots. One source of getting extraneous roots is to square both sides of the equation or to raise to higher powers. There is another source of extraneous roots. What is that? Suppose you have a trigonometric equation involving tangent ratio, just for example. And suppose somehow you convert the tan function involved in the trigonometric equation into sine or cosine terms. And then you proceed to solve it. What happened was, in the beginning when you had the very trigonometric equation in the tangent function, the thetas, the thetas which were allowed to come as the solution for that trigonometric equation were only those thetas for which the tangent ratio was defined. And tan is not defined for odd multiples of pi by 2. That means right in the beginning the thetas which were allowed to come and sit in the solution set could be any real numbers apart from odd multiples of pi by 2. That was the case in the beginning. That means the domain of the trigonometric equation right in the beginning with tangent ratio involved was all the real numbers excluding odd multiples of pi by 2 because tan is not defined for those particular angles. But when you in your process of solving the trigonometric equation, when you converted tan into sine or say cosine, what you did was unintentionally you increased the domain of solutions. Sine and cosine are defined for every real number, even for odd multiples of pi by 2. And therefore, when you in the process of solving the trigonometric equation, converted the tangent function into entirely sine or cosine, you have increased the domain of your answers. Now, the values of the unknown angle theta can even be odd multiples of pi by 2. But... This is what happens when you increase the domain of trigonometric equation. You get as solutions some values of the unknown angle theta through solving process you get that but actually they do not prove to be solutions of the original trigonometric equation. Yes, that is what we have been doing. We have been solving one trigonometric equation by simplifying it in form of other trigonometric equations. But in this process, you should not increase the domain of trigonometric equation. What I gave you the example of was that in the beginning, the original trigonometric equation said that I can have answers only from collection of all reals minus odd multiples of pi by 2. That means odd multiples of pi by 2 can never be the solutions of the original trigonometric equation involving the tan function. But when you started solving it and you converted it into, into sine or cos, you allowed the odd multiples of pi by 2 also to be the solutions. And that means in this way you can or you will get odd multiples of pi by 2 also present in the solution set. But they are not actually the solutions and therefore this is one more source of creating extraneous roots. And thus, in order to avoid the very presence of extraneous roots, what you have to keep in mind is that we need to avoid, yes, we need to avoid squaring both sides of the trigonometric equation. or raising both sides 
of the trigonometric equation to higher powers yes we have to avoid squaring both sides of the trigonometric equation or raising both sides of the equation to higher powers and avoid extension of the domain. Domain of the trigonometric equation. Yes, you have to avoid extending, increasing the size of the domain of trigonometric equation like we were doing in the example which I was speaking about. In the beginning, we had a smaller domain which was all real numbers minus all odd multiples of pi by 2 because this is the very valid domain for the tan function which is actually the function involved in the original trigonometric equation. But when you in the process of solving it increased the domain and made it the collection of all real numbers by converting tan into sine or cos, you increase the size of the domain thereby inviting all odd multiples of pi by 2 to come inside the solution set and that is what leads to the creation of extraneous roots which is extension of the domain of trigonometric equation. So what have I written? I have written avoid squaring both sides of the equation or raising both sides of the equation to higher powers and also avoid extension of the domain of trigonometric equation because this leads to the creation or the presence of extraneous roots. And what are extraneous roots? Well, values of the unknown angle in the trigonometric equation which are present in the solution set but do not satisfy the trigonometric equation are called extraneous roots. That is what is the meaning of extra roots, unrequired roots or extraneous roots. This is the very first point, very important point which you have to keep in mind. You have to, have to avoid the very squaring and you have to avoid the extension of the domain. Even if you square the trigonometric equation to solve it, or even if you lead to the extension of domain in order to solve the trigonometric equation. In the end, please check for extraneous roots. Sometimes it feels intuitively that squaring the trigonometric equation, both sides of the trigonometric equation, or somehow leading to the increasing of the domain of trigonometric equation, always or sometimes it leads us to very simply obtaining the solution set. But there are chances that inside that solution set, you will have actual solutions present, but sometimes you also have extra, extra values of angle present which are not the solutions. So even if you are squaring or if you are extending the domain, 
please in the end check that are you getting some extra roots or not and if you are getting get rid of them remove them and just your final solution set should be the values of the unknown angle theta which are actually satisfying the trigonometric equation that is what you need to keep in mind as the very first point while solving trigonometric equations be ready to understand the next point which you should keep in mind while solving the trigonometric equations